If you saw my last video, we spoke about AMD's new 3D vCache technology. We spent some time with AMD's Saft Navsiga to answer the questions we had from the original announcement. What's your minimum specification? So one of the first questions that came out to the gate is, when are we going to get it in product? So AMD clarified that yes, they're going to start production this year on a high-end compute product. This is going to be on the Ryzen platform, and it's going to be using the Zen 3 architecture. Now, there were questions as to exactly what's going to be coming next from AMD. It looks like we're going to get another crack of Zen 3, which pushes Zen 4 further out into 2022, which AMD confirmed is going to be on a 5 nanometer and coming next year as well. The fact that this is coming out so soon, uh, along with TSMC's conference that's happening this week, shows that TSMC's SOIC technology of stacking these chips is in full production. So the fact that this pushes the Zen 4 product out to 2022 means that that's roughly going to be when DDR5 is in plentiful supply. I think this is a good move from AMD. One of the other uh, questions was, how are they getting 64 megabytes of SRAM into a die 64 square millimeters, given that in the same die area, the main Zen 3 chiplet only has 32 megabytes? Sam explained to us that that's because uh, they're using a very SRAM specific technology that allows them to increase the density. On the main chiplets, they have to use a process which both works for the cores and for the SRAM. So by using an SRAM only process for this chiplet, it means that they can optimize it and double the density. One of the other concerns was with thermals, especially because you're putting a chiplet on top of a chiplet and the one that has all the cores is on the bottom. How does the heat, how does, how does the energy thermally radiate out of that processor? AMD explained it to us that the uh, additional cache chiplet is only above the other L3 cache. It's not above the cores. This means that AMD can provide additional stiffeners above the cores that are thermally conductive, meaning that there are no increase in thermal considerations. There's also a question regarding the exact height of this processor. We asked AMD, you know, are there any changes of Z height using the vCache? AMD explained to us that they've been able to shave enough height off of a chiplet such that the vCache plus chiplet is exactly the exact same Z height as the original chiplet in Zen 3. This means that they're expecting no additional height increase by adding the vCache, and it also equates to the same height as the I.O. die, meaning that they can put a complete product in the same packaging that Zen 3 currently is. Regarding performance of the vCache as additional L3, AMD confirmed that the uh, new L3 is striped with the current L3, so there should be no performance penalty. We asked Sam if we expect to see a difference when we do our standard frequency sweeps at an Antec. He said it'd be interesting to see, to see if you actually find any difference. So it sounds like AMD isn't expecting any additional latency, or at least not just purely from making the cache bigger, due to the fact that they're using a 3D vCache. There is a benefit to stacking vertically, and that means the wires go straight up rather than having to expand the wires out in a 2D fashion. That actually lowers the resistance of wires, and that's one of the benefits AMD is playing with here. So one of the things that's interesting is that with Zen 3 on the Milan Epic platform, in the BIOSes of those early platforms, we saw a, a, an option in the BIOS that said X3D. One stack, two stack, four stack, eight stack. Uh, so we put it to AMD, you know, is this technology suitable for multiple stacking of chiplets? And is this one 64 uh, megabyte die or is this two stacked 32 megabyte dies? AMD confirmed that it is a one stack technology right now. And even though that TSMC's SOIC platform can scale to 12 stacks, AMD is only looking at productizing one stack right now. They refused to comment on if any additional stacks would be used. So one of the final questions that we asked AMD is whether this uh, technology is going to go beyond Ryzen to the Epic family. It sounds like this would be great for code compilation, and we can really imagine an Epic processor with 700 megabytes of L3 cache. AMD declined to comment. So it's really great that AMD reached out to give us this opportunity to ask questions. Uh, I'm expecting to hear more in sort of the Q3, Q4 timeframe as AMD is putting this technology into production. Now that they've put it in the forefront of our minds, we're going to keep asking about it and we won't take no for an answer. So I think it's a good idea that AMD is productizing this vCache on Zen 3. It means we get another round of Zen 3 products at the end of the year with this additional performance. AMD is claiming around 15% in gaming. It also means it pushes Zen 4 and AM4 out to next year when DDR5 is in a bountiful supply, I guess. Uh, but it also means that it has time for that platform to adjust to new Zen 4 products 
TSMC to ramp up their 5 nanometer for AMD, and it should help everybody all round. I'd love to know your thoughts on this new technology. Are you going to buy one of these new CPUs? Are you going to, were you in the market for one and are you going to hold out? Or should we just wait until Zen 4 when uh, everything uh, changes to DDR5? Please let me know in the comments.